Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the regular scheduled Tabor Town Council meeting for November 14th, 2023. I will call the meeting to order. Actually, first off, sorry, we do have a subdivision authority meeting first that I would ask to call that to order and ask for the adoption of the subdivision authority meeting. Councillor Bruin. Mr. Mayor, I'll make that motion. Motion for the agenda for the subdivision authority meeting on the table. All in favor? Chair Namasi, thank you. All right, on to uh, item number three, adoption of minutes. Item 3.1 minutes of regular meeting of subdivision authority, September 25th, 2023. Mr. Tebow. Uh, the meeting, a meeting of the meeting minutes of the subdivision authority for September 25th, 2023, submitted to council for your approval. All right, thank you. Any questions arising? So I'm prepared to make that motion. Councilor Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd be prepared to make the motion that we adopt the minutes of the regular meeting of subdivision authority held on September 25th, 2023, as presented. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. All in favor? Carry now. Thank you. Item number four, subdivision applications. Item 4.1, correction to TT 23-0-002, 6003 60th Avenue. Mr. Tebow. Um, so this correction, Mayor and Council, uh, is speaking to a number uh, on the Original recommendation, we had block 15, and it should have been block five. So this is asking council to revisit that, to rescind the previous motion, and uh, redo the motion with the proper block number. And Selena and Chris are here if there's any questions. All right, thank you. Any questions arising? No. Councilor Bruin? So I see in the motion here, the recommendation, we still say block 15, or you want block five? So recommended motion one, is rescinding the wrong one and recommended motion two is the correction. Thank you. All right. That's all right. Councilor McLean, you had a question also? No, I All right. Thank you, Councilor Brown. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll make the motion that the subdivision authority rescinds an unadopted resolution 8 2023 moved by Councilor McLean for the approval subdivision TT 23 0 002. Lot 8, Block 15, Plan 8910110, within the northeast quarter of Section 5, Township 10, Range 16, west of the Fourth Meridian, civically described as 6003 60th Avenue, with the following nine conditions as amended. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Sure, now, let's see. Thank you. All right, so I'm prepared to make the second required motion. Councillor Bruin? All right. All right. For that, Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion that the subdivision authority approves subdivision TT 23-0-002, lot 8, block 5, plan 8910110, within the northeast quarter of section 5, township 10, range 16, west of the 4th, Meridian, civically, civically described as 6003 60th Avenue, following nine conditions. All right, thank you, motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carried unanimously, thank you. On to item 4.2, subdivision TT 23-0-0045-12047 Avenue, Mr. Tebow. Uh, so the MPC had a, held a special meeting. This uh, subdivision was on that special meeting and then brought to, to tonight's council. This is to do with the um, park that's going on over by the um, parallel church area. And again, um, Selena and Chris are here if there's any questions. All right, thank you. Any questions arising whatsoever? Councillor Brown? I just question, have we seen the blueprints for what we're doing there or how did we come about the design? Mr. Tebow? Yeah, we'll grab uh, Mr. Egan and, and uh, Ms. Newberry to answer that. Uh, yes, we actually uh, employed a designer uh, to uh, create a landscaping plan for that park. Not sure if you're away that particular time, yeah, Councillor Bruner. So. Okay, Councillor Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I was just wondering if this then. Um, 
to word this properly, it, um, use the funds for the beautification grant, and uh, how are we looking for that, if I can ask in this meeting? You bet. So the original concept was approved uh, okay. with drawings, and part of that approval was to re seek reallocation of the downtown revitalization grant that was originally uh, uh, to be used for the ball boat project, which was put on hold. Uh, that was submitted, and we were approved for uh, same set of circumstances. So, a uh, seventy-five percent contribution from that grant. Can I, Mr. Mayor? Sure, you bet. So we're within budget. We're able to use hopefully most of those funds mm -hmm. um, before it expired, because I think we were use, using um, a small time frame to use those funds. Yeah, we are on track right now to complete likely by the end of November, um, and uh, the grant runs out December 31st, so we're well within the time frame. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Any other questions? Councilor McLean? I'm just prepared to make a motion, Mr. Mayor. All right, very that well. That the subdivision authority approve subdivision TT 23-0-004, block one, Plan 921-0689 within the northwest quarter section 32, Township Road 9, Range Road 6, right, Range 16, west of the 4th Meridian, civically described as 5120 47th Avenue with the following seven conditions. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carry now. Thank you. All right, I just wonder, Mr. Thibault, if we, uh, I know council has seen this previous, but to, to clarify that the tank piece, tank 77 piece with that particular park location and or any extension possibilities. So once all the invoices are in, uh, I know there's been uh, an extension asked for and verbally there was an extension that they were talking about to March. So once we get all the invoices in, do the submission, they'll see what kind of money is okay. left over. <coughs> and uh, then we'll have to officially ask for that extension on paper. Right, okay. All right, thank you. And no other details related to the subdivision authority. i ask for a motion to close the meeting, please. Anybody? <laughs> Councilor Sarsen. <laughs> please, can we <laughs> end this meeting? <laughs> motion on the table. All in favor? Here now, thank you. <laughs> you did. Oh, there you go. Glad, glad to see some of the younger folks aren't exactly tech savvy either. So. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, uh, Councillor Bruin, do you mind sliding your your uh, laptop over for <laughs> Councillor Renford for a little assistance here? <laughs> <laughs> or Councillor Sorensen, either one. All right. You have to improvise on occasion, Councillor Effort. And this is another one of those occasions. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. Uh, we'll call the regular scheduled Tabor Town Council meeting for November 14th, 2023, to order and ask for an adoption agenda, please. Councillor Firth. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that we adopt the agenda as presented. Motion on the table. All in favor? Carried now. Thank you. And we also have a public hearing. So we'll call the public meeting or public hearing to order and ask for the copy of the or sort of the acceptance of the agenda for the public hearing, please. Councilor Bruin? I can make that motion, Mr. Mayor. Motion on the table. All in favor? Carried now. Thank you. All right, on to item 3.1. This is for the public's benefit. Uh, all public in attendance who wish to speak against or for the direct control development application 23-140 will have a five minute limit, time limit for speaking and must state their full name for the record and also must state if they are speaking themselves on behalf or, or speaking for themselves rather or on behalf of a group or organization. 
Great. Uh, Mr. Thiebaud? Um, so again, uh, Selena Newberry and, and Chris are available for discussion on this one. Uh, to my knowledge, Mr. Mayor and Council, there's been no, no um, documentation received around this public hearing, and as you can see, there's nobody here today. So um, this is to deal with that um, property that we dealt with, I think, a couple times um, with the corner of um, 56th Avenue and Highway 864, secondary uh, housing unit. All right, thank you. And just to confirm that, you're saying, uh, as far as you're aware, and or the uh, planning department, there's been no written briefs related to anyone against the direct control? Hi, Mr. Mayor. Um, no, we have received no communication from any of the public regarding um, for or against for this public hearing. All right, very well, thank you. All right, is anyone present who wishes to speak against direct control development application 23-140? Anyone present wishing, present wishing to speak against direct control development application 23140 a second time? And anyone present who wishing to speak to or against the direct control development application 23-140 a third and final time? Seeing none, all right, thank you. Moving on, again, confirmed uh, no written briefs uh, obtained for direct control as well. So anyone present wishing to speak for the direct control development application 23-140? Anyone present wishing to speak for the direct control application 23-140 a second time? And anyone wishing to speak for direct control application 23-140 a third and final time? All right, seeing none, no motion required. I ask for a motion to close the meeting, please. Close the public hearing. Councillor McLean. Motion on the table, all in favor? Carried unanimous. Thank you. All right, moving on to Item four, Dawson Minutes, item 4.1 minutes of organizational meeting, Council, October 23rd, 2023. Council Renfer? I make a motion that Council adopts the minutes of the organizational meeting of Council held on October 23rd, 2023, as presented. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carried unanimously. Thank you. Item 4.2 minutes of regular meeting of Council, October 23rd, 2023. Mr. Thiebel. Meeting minutes are in front of council for your consideration. All right, thank you. Anything arising? Councilor First. Just prepared to make a motion, Mr. Mayor. Very well. I move that council adopts the minutes of the regular meeting of council held on October 23rd, 2023, as presented. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carried down. We'll see. Thank you. No business arising, no bylaws. Item 7, action items. Item 7.1, 2024 capital budget. Mr. Thiebaud. So this is the second time that the capital budget has come in front of council. There are some updates from the previous uh, listing that was in front of council last time. Mr. Orwa is here to uh, answer any questions and we have other folks, uh, other directors around if there's any particular questions on the capital projects themselves. All right, thank you, Mr. Orwa. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of council. So as uh, Mr. Tibolt has said, we're just presenting what we had last time. But if if you can bring for me the uh, <laughs> me, me, I'm fine, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty good, except uh, not everybody might be good. So. If you reduce the percentage, probably to one fifty or something. So as you can see on the list, so what, what's happening there is uh, we have reduced uh, the listing from uh, some adjustments from what you saw last time. Some projects were taken out after, you know, senior leadership meeting. Uh, we thought it wise to bring down some projects and uh, manage the projects that we can go through in 2024. Now, the other thing that uh, you can notice there is... Um, we normally have about two million that we uh, normally get from the tax base. That is what we call contributions to capital from the tax base. And you can see, if you look at the reserves, we are strictly doing about 1.8 million. So what that means is administration has reduced contributions uh, to capital by about 171,000 to give the citizens some relief in terms of taxes. 
for 2024. Uh, the other thing that I would like to bring to your attention, which of course uh, you might need council's input, is on the funding. Now the MSI still remains the same. Uh, federal gas tax still remains the same. They have not changed anything. They have not given us any other information apart from what we had previously. The only thing that probably we might need some discussion is on the LTD, that is the long-term borrowing. Now, on the long-term borrowing, you can see we have about three projects. Out of those pre three projects, they are, based on ut they are utility based projects. So we just want to make sure that uh, council is comfortable how we are going to service that debt. Because if we borrow that money, then uh, to pay that debt, it has to come from um, uh, utility side to service that debt. So probably that is the only discussion that we wanted to get from council, if council is comfortable uh, financing that uh, from LTD and then servicing that debt from utility. I think maybe I'll just open that discussion and show some numbers if required. All right, thank you. Any questions arising for Mr. Orwa? Councilor McLean? Sorry. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I forget what the diamond upgrade for IT is. All right. Uh, Mr. Roy, can you field that one or do we need an so, L on that one? <laughs> no, I'm not feeling that. So diamond is uh, the software, the financial software that we use uh, within the organization. So within that diamond, that's where we have accounts payable, we have accounts receivable, we have receipts that we have, financial statements. So every year there are updates. And there are a lot of things that are done because of what's happening around. So as a result, we have to make sure that we are up to date with what is required out there for us to function. Okay. All right. Thank you. Councillor Firth. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through to Mr. Orwa. Uh, so what are you proposing uh, for to fund those uh, three projects to service the debt? Are you proposing? Um, <coughs> Uh, surcharge on utility bills, or what was your thought? I think that is exactly what uh, administration is recommending, um, that we service those debts through utility. That means we'll be seeing additional charge on the utility. And that is the discussion I want to make sure that uh, council is comfortable before we go through or look for other sources of funding to finance that debt. So anyway, I just wanted to have a, a quick illustration because uh, if that might help on um, because I was uh, asked probably what would that look like in terms of what people will see on their bills. And uh, I just did a quick math here just for illustration. Um, is that good? No small. <laughs> okay. So you can see, um, if you look at the first one, the 45th uh, Avenue cast iron uh, uh, sanitary replacement. So what you see there is 975. That is the principal amount. So if I were to go borrow money right now, I ran that in the morning from uh, Alberta Capital Finance, we have to consider the cost of borrowing as well. So if you add the principles plus interest, the total would be about 1.285 million. That is, I spread it over 10 years. So what would that look like? And you can see, if we were just to make sure that everybody pays the same, whether it's non-residential or residential, you'll be adding about $3 to your bill. The flip side would be, if I use the tax ratio that we use on the tax side, that is on non-residential and residential, the picture might change a little bit. And that's what the calculation that I have on the side. So right now we do have about 3,053 residential and about 374 non-residential to a total of 3,400 accounts. So if we were to use that ratio of 60, 40, you know, the way we have it on the tax side, then you can see the residential will be about $2.11. And then non-residential will pick more. So the same thing I've done with downtown sanitary, the same thing I've done with lagoon. So if we were to go through to answer that question, then those are some of the additional bills that people will be seeing on their on their notices when they get their bills. 
All right, thank you. Councilor Firth? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Orwa, so what you're proposing is to take that total amount, principal and interest, and just divide it, um, <coughs> so that first number is to divide it evenly between the number of accounts in the town of Tabor. Okay. That's why we get the 3.13. That's everybody pays the same. But if you switch the other way where we use the, the tax ratio that we normally use, you sit at around 60, 40, around there, then it will now change. So but, that, go ahead. No, sorry. So, but it, it doesn't fluctuate based on usage. It is the same amount every month per user. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, Councillor Becker. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. To follow up on Council first uh, observation or point, this calculation has nothing to do whatever with the assessed value of the properties, correct? No. So a person who's got a $250,000 assessed home pays the same $2.11 as a guy that's got some on a thousand dollar house. Is that correct, sir? That is correct. Now, in the, in the tax system, if you would incorporate this long-term debt into the tax system, it would be different, wouldn't it? That's correct. So totally opposed to this in this community, Mr. Orwell, thank you. Based on that reason. All right, thank you. Councillor Sorsen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And um, Mr. Orwell, I'm just um, looking at our 10-year capital plan, and I just seen that perhaps we had planned on doing a bit more for the um, cast iron replacement. So is this, because on here it says 2.1 million. So are we moving forward? Um, some of our capital plan to um, uh, future years? The projects, that comes from the operation team. And uh, we do have the, uh, the operation team. Is this something that uh, we want to see future? Or did you get the question from? Uh, sorry, if you might repeat the question. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, I'm just looking at the 10-year capital plan, and um, the one that I'm looking at potentially was a bit more. Um, and then, so I'm just wondering if then some of this is now moved to future years. So the 10-year capital planning horizon provides uh, the long-range estimate of what we think will happen. We use that uh, to derive the current year's plan. And in this particular case, uh, this project was presented last cycle, uh, but because of the clarifier project, uh, that clarifier project was approved and this was held. So this okay. remains our top priority from last year. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we're just gonna move the 10 year capital plan out uh, another year. Okay, yep. That was the rationale behind our thinking and, and right. preparing. I just wanna make sure that's what I'm understanding. Thank you. All right, thank you. Any other questions? All right, Mr. Roy. So I think uh, um, the, way, the way it is, um, it's just council's direction to move forward to approve as is. And if not, then we have to you know, figure out how we are going to do the funding of those uh, three projects. And then secondly, if you have to go for long-term borrowing, then we have to figure out exactly how we're going to service those debts. So the first, we're looking at utility to service the debt or go back to, again to the reserves. So that is, I just opened that discussion before we close the, Mr. Tibolt, you want to add something? Um, I, I don't really have much to add. I, I, I would suggest that um, administration had presented to council the idea of utilities being self-supporting. Um, so, so understanding your point, Councillor Beckering, as to how that shakes out, um, this is heading that direction that utilities are actually borne by the utilities side of the equation and not the tax base. And so this is kind of what led us, what led administration to this was utilities being self-supporting. Therefore, when you borrow against a utility, it's, it's because it is a utility, not a, not a property tax. All right. Thank you. Councilor Rafford. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, looking back at them too, 
I would say the one where the businesses pay more, like that 60-40, the second one, would they not then maybe pass on an increase back to the consumer, which is us, you know, the people. So if you did it the tax base way, like that 60-40%, in a sense, the business has seen an increase in their payment, maybe just up the, their prices, and then they would pass that on to all of the town again. So if we did it that way, not splitting it evenly, you know, maybe they wouldn't pass it on or, you know, because then somebody could be, you know, throwing in extra because the businesses are just going to pass it on. Like if, you know, you're just going to up your price of bread, water, milk, beer, anything, right? So then it would be passed on to the consumer. So I like the one divided each way, like, you know, divided by everybody. So that's my approach. All right. Thank you. Councillor Broom. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd have to agree with Councillor Renford. Um, it seems to be a fair way to do it. Everyone pays equally for the uh, use of our utilities in town, whether you have 750000 or 250000 or you have a couple million dollar uh, industrial building or a smaller one. I think uh, we all got to contribute to the utilities equally. All right. Thank you. Councillor Becker? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. You know, if you look at the numbers, uh, Councils and Mr. Mayor and Mr. Orwa, could you put the numbers again? The total uh, residential and the total non residential is 3,000, 3, I believe, to 350 or something. I can't read that. What, what is it? 3, yes. So the, the residential is 3,053, and then non residential is 370. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Orwa. So my point is, of course, besides the fact that it's not a fair taxation, in my view, uh, that 90% would be borne by the residential, only 10% by the non-residential because of the sheer numbers, right? It's, it's 10, 10 to 1, right? So how is that fair? I, I don't understand. Unless you want to throw away all bases of, of taxation through value like we're doing now, to assess values, you know, we're, we're digging ourselves into a big pit here, uh, fellow councils and Mr. Mayor, because I don't think this is fair. And I believe in fair taxation. You want to call it taxation or a surcharge or a levy, I don't care. Either It's either one or the other, in my view. So that's why I'm very much opposed to this scenario. Because we did it last year with the infrastructure fee, the $7 and the $6, and I didn't think that was fair either. But, you know, done is done. But I, don't think, we're, I think we're on the wrong path, Mr. Mayor. All right. Thank you. Councilor First. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just had a question for Councillor Beckering. So are you proposing that the fee would be tied to assessment rather than to rather than just a flat fee? Mr. Mayor, yes, that's that. correct, Councillor. Yeah. Based, based on the assessed value. All right, thank you. So, Mr. Orwell, just with uh, the, the proposal scenario with Councillor Beckering, does that cause extra grief financially or from the uh, finance department to make this consistent across the board then in that regard or no? No, no, from finance standpoint, um, if we were to go the utility way, all we do is to add different lines on the bill and send the bill out if it's approved by council. Um, because that is the only way we can uh, collect the money to service the debt if we go through the long term. Okay, so the, the end all goal always is, is to be able to cover that figure, right? So however you do that, but that's, that's what I'm asking. So it can be done how Council Brecker is suggesting in a, in a uh, I guess, for lack of better terminology, like a sequential kind of a, an order to make that work? I think if I get uh, Councillor Becker incorrectly, he's... Uh, Councillor Beckering is opposed to uh, having the surcharge on the utility, but now going back to the tax base uh, to get that money based on uh, you know what we'll be collecting from the citizens, then it's spread over, and then the money that we collect will be part of the expense to repay that debt, so that it doesn't come from utility as a surcharge on its own. Is that correct, Mr. Beckering? Yes, Mr. Mayor, that, that is correct. You know, and if you want to continue the conversation, if I may, Mr. Mayor, uh, you could, I guess, say, okay, we want utilities to pay for themselves, you know, be a 
a profit or a cost center on its own, which what, that's what we're trying to do, and I know that. Then you have to raise utility rates then. That's the only way to do it, to make it fair, Mr. Oro, right? Besides your scenario. If you raise utility rates lots, then you can service that debt. But at least then, those who use that utilities the most will pay the most. That's a little more fair. Not 100%, but it's a little more fair. All right, thank you. Councilor Broome? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just so I understand this correctly, so if you go off assessed value and uh, finance this that way, uh, uh, companies such as the sugar factory, their SAS value is millions and millions and millions. So they're going to pay a lot of money for utilities. Whereas someone with uh, a smaller industry, say worth half a million dollar shop, they're going to pay him very little. So I think that he, I understand what Mr. Becker is saying, but uh, I think that would be too much burden on a lot of these big businesses in our town. I think it, the fairer way to do it is just a flat rate. All right, thank you, Councillor Firth. Oh, sorry, did, did you have a... Yes, I just wanted to simplify sure. this area. Now, when, when we are having projects, or when we are having uh, projects like what we have before you, we look for the funding. And the funding sources are, one, grants. Now, if we don't have enough grants, we go for long-term borrowing. And when we're talking of long-term borrowing, we have to make sure that we know how we're going to service that debt. And that is exactly the question that you have before you. And then the third one would be to get funds from the reserves, if at all we have anything from the reserves. So basically, that, those are the only sources of funding that we have for our projects. So what we've been doing in the past is we do collect money. That's what we call contributions to capital. That comes from the tax base. So we collect money from the citizens package in the reserves to finance our projects. So to avoid that, we are trying to go the utility way. And that is exactly what we have before you. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure that that's clear. All right. Thank you. Councilor Firth. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, while I can appreciate what Councilor Beckering is saying about um, if higher assessments should pay more, a greater assessment doesn't necessarily mean that you have greater usage of your utilities. And so his point about um, possibly tying it to utility rates, I can understand that as well. But if we're just looking to service this debt, then I think if what we're trying to do is to have utilities pay for themselves, then a flat rate really does make the most sense. Um, it might not be fair, but at least then everybody that accesses our utilities is sharing the burden equally. All right, thank you. Councillor Renford. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, so really only doing the flat fee on the cast iron, the lagoon, and the sanitary pipe cleaning, right? So if it was like electricity, we all pay the same, so usage would go to it. These are big capital things, like if they do it in front of your house the next time, you know, they're, we're going to keep doing this. So these are things that have to be split this way. I don't know how, if I have a bigger house, I pay more to fix the cast iron on 45th than the guy that lives on 45th. You know what I mean? We could say the next thing is if you live there, you pay more. You know, you know the lagoon, If you know, then you'd have to say how many times bathroom was flushed. I, you know what I mean? I, I don't know how we go to taxation. We Taxation is the easy one to go to, but... I don't think it fixes the problem of fairness either. All right, thank you. Councillor McLean. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would have to agree. I think that, yeah, as whole projects, we have to kind of share this burden for, like, as the town equally. And I think, yeah, the best way to do that is probably the flat rate. $6.00. And 11 cents added to a bill is kind of a big pill to swallow and kind of hard to explain that addition. But infrastructure is getting old and things have to be replaced. And it's just kind of one of those things that has to be done. So I would agree that that's probably the kind of how Councillor Remfer explained it is that yeah, when it's a project like this, when it's just a plain project that everyone benefits from equally, then 
it's just something that everybody then shares the cost. Thank you. All right, thank you, Councillor Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I just um, agree on putting it on utilities, a flat fee. I think moving forward, like we historically have not been saving for infrastructure, and it needs to be addressed, and this is the way that I think it's fair for the whole, all the citizens to pay for it. So. All right, thank you. Councillor Beckering? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, at least this was a very, very uh, healthy discussion, and I'm sure we've had the seven people on the table here. All right, thank you. Councillor Sorensen. I'd just be prepared to make a motion, Very Mr. Well. Mayor, yep. that Council approve the 2024 capital budget as presented. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? Councillor Beckering. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Does that, does that include the scenario with the, as, as suggested by Mr. Orwell? Does that include that? Mr. Orwell, I believe that's that, not. I believe that's included, is it not? Sorry, by passing the to mean as presented simply means that the funding will be from what you've seen. Those three lines will be coming from long-term uh, debt, and we will be servicing those debts from the utility side. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right, thank you. Motion on the table once again. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? All right, carried. Thank you. All right, on to item 7.2, franchise fees. Mr. Thiebaud. Franchise fees is not a new terminology to council. Mr. Orwa and the administration brings this back every year, so uh, Mr. Orwa will stay there to have this discussion one more time this year. All right, thank you. Councillor Renford. Hey, could we just get a little tune up what this is? <laughs> I kind of yep. get it. Fair I enough. Get it. Yeah, that's, but yeah. just a you know, just a quick one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll make it quick. So, um, so the town of Tabor has a franchise agreement with Fortis Alberta for electricity and uh, natural gas uh, from Atco. So, the premise behind the franchise is that the town is giving these two private corporations the sole right to deliver electricity and gas to us. So in return, we get the revenue. That's the one we're calling the franchise fee. And again, it is the franchise fee. This is the only fee that is paid by everybody within, uh, within the town, whether you rent or you have your own property. So every, every year, this is regulated by the Alberta Utility Commission. So every year, they send us that information. Did you make any changes? Is it going to remain flat? Then based on that, we have to submit whatever council resolution is. So that if it remains the same the way it is today, we make no change. If council changes something, then they have to send so that we get additional revenue. And those revenues, for example, from Fortis Alberta will be based on a number of moving parts, including you know, transmission charges, you know, delivery charges, and all those things. What makes it so, like I see in other towns it's higher and lower is because they have more options. Is that why? So then there's different. I just didn't understand like we seem high. So I thought maybe somebody that's 6% has three different utility options for that. So, you know, so they're getting still 18 in a sense. They're getting 6, 6, and 6. So. Thank you for that question. Actually, that's why I attached that uh, franchise, I call it the franchise rider. And that rider, depends on at the discretion of that municipality. Because other municipalities have other sources of revenue that meets their needs. Others might not have enough that meets their needs. And if you look at uh, this particular rider, you can see it ranges from very low to the maximum of 20% that is on Fortis Alberta. So the town of Tabor right now is sitting at 18, because council reduced it by 2% about two, three years ago. Now on the, the other side of Atco Gas, uh, the high volume uses is maxed at 35% by the Alberta Utility Commission. <coughs> and then the low volume uses is about 20%. So those ones were also reduced by council, where the low volume uses are at 18 now, and the high volume uses are at 33%. So every year you'll be, you'll be talking about the same story. Are we making any change or we remain as is before we submit back? 
think that is just at a very high level. What we do. All right, thank you. Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, my vote is to not increase. Um, I feel like a lot of people have had huge increases in their um, fees for these kinds of things, and if we increase, it's just gonna fall to them. I think that all of people in town are feeling the pinch right now, and I don't think that increasing them is going to, I mean, we might get more money for it, but it's just gonna come from the members in town. I don't, like, it's just gonna get passed on. And so I don't think it's a very smart idea to do that. Thanks. All right, thank you, Councillor Firth. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I also would agree with not increasing it. Um, I'm concerned about the potential in impact on economic development. Um, I'm not sure how much that factors into um, industry or companies' decisions to locate in Tabor, but I'm sure um, an increased utility bill isn't something that is attractive. Um, and as Councillor McLean said, the added burden on residents. Um, while I can appreciate what Mr. Orwa said, that this is something that goes to everybody. Um, everybody pays, whether you are a renter, or whether you're a property owner. Um, it, I still feel like it's an added burden that I, I can't support at this time. Thank you. All right, thank you. <laughs> Councillor Beckering. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was I was on council when this when we decided to decrease from twenty percent to eighteen percent, which is, which is a decrease of about ten percent actually. But I'm 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 starting to rethink my position. I, I I do think that it's probably required to to be increased, but you know what? It doesn't really matter if you don't or do, because it represents about two percent of your taxes. Is what it does. So if you don't. Want to increase this? You got to increase your tax rate immediately by two percent. So, I think it's one way. It's half a dozen or the other. I mean, it's to me, it's not shaking, Mr. Mayor. All right, thank you, Councillor Brown. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I um, somewhat agree with Councillor Beckery. Um, and, and I think it was three years ago. Uh, Council at the time decided to decrease our our uh, franchise fees. At the time, I wasn't in favor of that. I think uh, I would be in favor of increasing, as you suggest in the recommendation here, to keep us up to par with uh, what we're doing in the town. If uh, we want the services, utilities, everything we have, we need to uh, get money from somewhere, it either comes from taxes or through this. All right, thank you. Councillor Sarson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it just seems to me it's a hidden tax. So either we tax it here, we tax it uh, to all the citizens with our property taxes. So one way or another, it's an increase. So I'm not sure if I'm in favor of a hidden tax. I would be more in favor of one that's forthcoming to all the citizens. All right, thank you. Councillor Rufford? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, going to that, I guess, like Councillor Beckering, uh, that it's either here or property tax. I would say I would be more in favor of keeping it at 18. Rent, rent would be affected by more of that. Property taxes, owners, you know, I think I'd rather see their tax, that tax rather than just throw it onto this, which is then just going to be getting from renters where I got trouble with housing and, and rent and stuff like that. So we'd be giving renters a little bit of a break or not, a, or sorry, not an increase. So. I see. All right. Thank you, Councillor Broom. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the problem is the, the renters aren't paying for it. If they, we don't do this, the renters aren't contributing because they're not paying the taxes. So um, that's why I think this we should be in favor of this because then it's fair to everyone. Councillor Firth. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm not a landlord, but I would guess that if we choose to keep this as it is and increase taxes instead that, um, and landlords are paying higher taxes, that likely rent is gonna go up because you know a landlord or a property owner is gonna have to recoup that cost somewhere. So like Councillor Beckering said, it's, and Councillor Sorensen as well, it's six of one, half a dozen of the other. Yeah, absolutely. And for myself, uh, Mr. Orr, I think it's, I, I like your rationale 
that, that everybody pays and so on. In that, I mean, in that sense, it makes it a little more fair for everybody, property owners and or renters. So um, it's never easy to raise anything, but as you said, and as has been discussed amongst council, it's gotta come from somewhere at some point. So <laughs> back to the six, one half dozen other comment, it's very true. So I see the rationale and the importance of uh, probably going with that route and supporting uh, to increase. I think even when we decreased three years ago, it was somewhat questionable and maybe not the best move at the time. It went, it flew at the council level, but you know, it's three years ago, right? So we're in a different uh, different era right now. So fairly important all the way around. Councilor McLean. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, my question, I guess, is to administration of why are we looking to increase at all? All right, Mr. Thibault, Mr. Roy. As part of the, as I said, as part of the requirement, every year that question comes to almost everybody from Alberta uh, Utility Commission. Then it flows through uh, ATCO and through Fortis, and we get those forms. Is council going to increase, or it will it remain constant? So this is something that we put before council every year, and based on what council passes, we send it back to them. This year nothing happens or this year we have to increase it. So it's something that is yearly. You'll be hearing me talking about yearly. Sure, you bet. You go ahead. No, I, I understand that concept. I understand that this has to be brought forward to us every year, but you know, like has been discussed, it's either here or in taxes. So why, why are we trying to increase it? That's my question. Well, why we're trying to increase it, first of all, revenue generation. That's the main idea here. And then number two, um, I always have to make sure that I show council exactly the opportunity cost. What did we lose if we didn't increase? Or what did we gain if we increased it? Like if you see what's on the board, uh, if let's say we had increased it uh, this year to max back, back to max where it's supposed to be, uh, we're going to net about 70,829 from ATCO and 147,000 from uh, Fortis Alberta. So, 218,292 is the revenue that we are losing, not increasing. So those are the things that you have to put on the table. But of course, this of course will assist us in other areas where there are shortfalls. That is the reason why we bring it back also to council for consideration. All right, thank you. Councilor Broom. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, with that, I'd like to make a motion. All right. That council increases the 2024 franchise fee rates for Fortis Alberta from 18 to 20 percent, and ACO gas from 18 to 20 percent, low and medium use, and from 33 to 35 percent, the high use, and directs administration to inform the two utility companies of this decision. All right. Thank you. Motion on the table. Councillor Sorensen. Can I ask that this be a recorded vote, please? Absolutely. That can be done. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Defeated. All right, thank you. Moving on to item 7.3, asset retirement obligations. Mr. Thibault? Uh, Mr. Orr, we'll stay up and speak to the asset retirement obligations. Uh, this was brought, I think, in front of the audit committee. Um, and, and it was talked about with council previously. So this was the follow-up information the council requested. Right, thank you, Mr. Roy. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So again, uh, these standards we're talking about are set by the standard board, which consists members of various levels of government, along with the representatives of the accounting side. And I think uh, one of the areas why it's coming back again uh, from the previous discussion, there were some questions that came up. Who is the authority? Who, who, who decides what needs to take place? And uh, this was discussed uh, extensively uh, during the audit committee. And um, uh, we also invited our external auditor who was in attendance virtually. And uh, of course, I would want to throw this back to uh, the audit committee uh, to share some of the things um, that were discussed. All right, thank you, Councillor Sorson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So I do sit on the audit committee, and so we did have a very lengthy discussion um, 
about this, and it just seems like it's um, standard accounting practices um, that is being put forward. And so it's something that I feel that um, is required for us to do, um, not only just in the future, but it's actually being asked of us to do this um, fiscal period. Um, because if we don't do it, then we will be lapsing. Is that correct, Mr. Orwa? Or how did the our accountant state it? Sorry, I don't know the terms. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, that was correct. That would be non-compliant by um, not doing this. Right. All right. Thank you. Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so I just had a question for the funds to come from operating MSI. Usually, I get the impression that we allocate MSI to capital projects. Um, do we have um, leftover MSI to use? Thank you very much. Uh, so this is operating MSI. Now the MSI that we normally allocate to projects from the list you've just seen are the capital MSI. So there is the capital side and then there's the operating side. Now the only reason why we have a little left there is we were, we were very fortunate in 2023, they doubled our operating MSI. We normally get around 65,000, but for some reason they sent to us times two. So that is where we are asking for the funding to help to assist us with these uh, standards. Uh, all right, yeah, all right, all right. Thank you, Councillor Becker. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Councillor Sorensen said it very well in, uh, in the audit committee meeting. We had Mr. Derek Taylor, our auditor, on the phone, and uh, he explained to us again uh, why it was required. It's just it's it's a requirement by law because like. You're non-compliant if you don't, and then uh, Alberta government through the MGA can actually do something about that. So we're, we're, we're kind of caught in rock and a hard place, you know, and we hate to spend $49,000 for bullshit, I think, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, I would agree. I would agree. <laughs> <laughs> no, honest answer, absolutely. <laughs> Councillor Bruin. I'd just like to say I think Councillor Beckering hit that right on the head. It's yeah. something being forced on us that's going to be a record that the government will always have of the town. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, you know, we did have some lengthy discussion on it, absolutely, and that's basically what Derek Taylor was suggesting that had to be done, and it's just, just, just doesn't seem to be completely fair with the hurry-up offense side of the things here, and, and or is this, is this even doable in the next eight weeks, seven, six weeks, I guess, we've got here, basically, right? Is it, is it doable to complete, Mr. Tebow? Um, I, I think I'll push that over to Mr. Orwa because he did have some discussions around that with the contractor, I believe, and so, Mr. Orwa. Yes, Mr. Mayor, uh, talking to uh, the contractor himself, it's possible they're going to, going to meet the, the deadline because by all means, they must, we have to make sure that this is captured in our uh, year ending December 31st, 2023. So if I am given clearance, then the work begins as early as tomorrow. And then you'll be seeing people on site, people moving around, trying to make sure that they look at all the buildings, especially the ones in town, and you know, they're looking for if there's any asbestos in them and make those estimates and any other place that they will identify. And you can see, uh, already I put in there that the project will be completed in five phases. That is after talking to them to make sure that those phases can be captured within the timeline that has been stipulated. So yes, they will. All right. Yeah, it's been a difficult time with the, re the renovation period with staff putting up with everything involved with this here. That's going to be more more of a um, difficulty on, on our staff involved here, right? But I guess if we have to do, we have to do it. But it's, it's a little bit of that forced uh, piece added to this here just doesn't seem to be remotely fair there. But I wish we had some other input from other, other locations there. But uh, Mr. Chibo, I think you were aware that or, or Mr. Taylor, I guess, suggested there wasn't a lot of pushback elsewhere. Is that correct? 
uh, in our meeting, he did suggest that, but I believe that uh, Mr. Orwa did a little uh, digging around in other municipalities uh, while we were away at a conference and then outside of that. So if you could speak to that, Mr. Orwa. Yes, thank you, Mr. Tibo. So uh, during our last conference, I had a chance to talk to my, uh, my peers and uh, I wanted to find out exactly how far they have gone. And uh, some of the municipalities are way ahead of us. Um, I know I did talk to the CEO of Red Deer. They started almost three, four, four weeks ago. They have also engaged a contractor. Um, I've talked to my counterpart in Redcliffe. Um, they started about three weeks ago. Uh, and they're also engaging the same um, contractor that we have. I've also talked to Pincher Creek. Uh, they're also on the go. And I also had a chance to talk to my counterpart in Banff. So it's challenging for everybody, but uh, they're doing it and uh, it has started. All right, thank you. Councillor Shorten. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I was just going to say that it's the sign of the times being uh, environmentally um, aware of your um, obligations, especially oil and gas, and now the electrical. Um, so I was just prepared to make a motion. But All right, thank you. Do you have a couple other questions sure. here first? But we'll certainly keep that in mind. Thank you. Councillor McLean? Yeah, I just uh, if you had another discussion with whatever is on the table, but I'm not... not uh, Disregarding her suggestion, but Councillor McLean. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just wanted to make sure that the extra MSI isn't a mistake. <laughs> you know, sometimes government do make mistakes, and that we have clarified with them that it wasn't an error sent to us because that has happened personally to me, and then I've had to repay money back to the government. So I just want to make sure that that's not an on their part that we then have to, we're going to get sent a bill for down the road. I can answer that question confidently that it's not a mistake. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, great. Thank you. Councillor Brook. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, humor me a bit on this, but um, this is just on town-owned buildings. That is correct. So let's, for example, take the Civic Centre, the small ice arena. We want to uh, build a large ice arena there. Part of the budget, budgeting process of building that ice arena would be destruction of the old small ice. So I don't, I really don't understand why we have to waste money on this. Any building we want to replace or something is included in the contracted price to remove that building and do it. I, I really think this is just a chance to make money for companies and I think it's just, I, I, I'll use Mr. Beckering's Term, this is bullshit. All right, thank you. Councilor Shortson. <laughs> well, on that note, <laughs> um, I can see the accounting discipline and why we have to follow these practices. So I'd be prepared to make a motion. The council approves the contracted services of the 360 energy liability management asset retirement obligation standard implementation in the amount of 49484 with funds to come from operating MSI. And I just wanted to make one point that it also includes tanks, not just buildings, but tanks or storage tanks. That is correct. So it's not, I just gave an example with buildings, but when they come to town, they'll be looking at everything possible um, and creating those liabilities because we don't know exactly when those things will happen. And I think uh, just to answer question Brun's uh, comment there to what's happening is uh, I think majority of municipalities have been caught unawares with some of these things and uh, they don't know exactly what to do. Just like in the oil sector, you know, the reclamation of the oil wells. So we just have to put a liability out there in our books in such a way that if anything like this happens in the future, then we are prepared. All right, thank you. Councillor Brew. If I understand this correctly, this becomes a liability to the town if we find tanks or the, the civic center. That's now a liability on our books, and to destroy or take down that building, it's now another liability on the town. So that's why that, I, I think this is pointless. It, it affects our borrowing capabilities. Everything does it not. Well, but I think as, as far as the, the standard goes, um, wh when you set some of this, a good example I would give that probably everybody knows is an oil well. 
the oil, the eye of the oil is there, you know, everything goes, but at the end of the day, you'll have to reclaim that well. So what they do in their books, the oil companies, they put set the, as a liability in there. They just know they're accounting for X. If anything happens, the reclamation time comes, then they have set something up to take care of that cost. But uh, I'm thinking of not with any particular business, but you have a business selling its offering, making lots of money. If they had to put on their books a liability cleaning up their job, they would be done. Like, for example, the sugar factory. What would it cost to bring that back to standards? Like, how, to me, it's, it's, it's just getting us into a situation that they're going to uh, say, no, you can't afford to operate anymore. All right, thank you. Councillor Shorson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, my comment to Mr. Bruin is that um, these liabilities will not be hidden. We'll all be aware of it, and we'll be able to move forward and plan for certain events to take place. Thank you. Councillor Renford. So, yes, my, well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, John, like, so if we're uncompliant, what happens if we're uncompliant? Regardless of my feelings of this or not, if we don't do it, we're uncompliant. What is the, you know, what happens? In the financial world, what is important is the audit opinion. Yeah. That is what is critical in a financial statement. When the auditors come, they give an opinion on their financial statements. And I think that's why if you bring that letter back, uh, it was stated very clearly that a, the audit opinion would need to reflect that resulting in a qualified opinion. So when you're given a qualified opinion, it means there are issues. And uh, our financial statements goes to uh, municipal affairs first May of every year. And those are the things they look for. So once they see a qualified opinion, then the problem begins from there. What is happening in that particular area? What is not right? Did they not do this? Were they non-compliant? And that thing will just, you know, yeah. Magnify into other things that you probably you don't want to get into. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Tebow. I don't know if this information helps or hurts, but I'm going to offer it. Uh, it is an unfunded liability. So while the liability does get recorded, it kind of behaves like amortization behaves in our current budget. And it's not something that we have to actually fund. Um, it's just recording that there is a liability. So a little bit to your point, Councilor Bruin, it's not a funded thing. Therefore, when we do do a project that is a renovation to this building or a renovation to the anything that has some environmental impact, because that's what this is, is looking after, is environmental impacts, that portion would be taken care of with that new contract, and we would be able to reduce a recorded liability in that particular area because it was taken care of through a renovation or, or a contract type thing. So I don't know if that helps or hurts, but it is an unfunded thing. All right, thank you. We do have a motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. On to item 7.4, third quarter financial statements. Mr. Thibault. Um, audit committee material again. Uh, so we'll keep Mr. Orba up here. And um, we went through this uh, third quarter financials um, pretty significantly. Uh, I think it was a really good meeting, good discussion. And I'll hand it over to Mr. Orba or council. Thank you, Mr. Roy. Uh, well, thank you very much. I think probably I'll again hand this one over to the audit committee. Because um, in the audit committee, we talk a lot for two hours. Uh, <laughs> if the audit committee can help me summarize in five or ten minutes. All right. Thank you, Councillor Becker. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I stand in the audit committee along with Councillor Sorensen and Mayor Prokop. We had a, a lengthy, very fruitful meeting, I believe, the other day. Uh, we discussed, of course, the ARO extensively also. Uh, we spent the majority of our time talking about budget and what money and we have, money we had and money we don't have. And the upshot of it was, in my opinion, Mr. Mayor, that uh, Mr. Orba gave a very good presentation. I think we are in good financial shape. Uh, we're making some significant dollars on investments that he's made uh, very astutely. And I'd like to commend him for that and, uh, and his staff too, of course. I, have, I can rest assured to the rest of council that was a very good meeting and we're in good shape. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Councillor Sorson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, Mr. Um, Beckering. I would agree that we had a great meeting, uh, live discussion, 
and uh, I think that our financial records are um, very, look very well, and look, well, very good. And um, yeah, there, I don't think there's really anything to report other than thanks to high interest rates, we're making uh, more money than anticipated. All right, thank you. And for myself, uh, I would echo my uh, uh, fellow audit committee members as well. Reports that uh, Mr. Roy, yourself, and your your financial team did a great job as always for us, and we are in very good shape. And I don't believe there's any concerns that way. Uh, looking forward to the future, and you continue to do great work with uh, everything involved there, and, and managed to explain this to us in the, the layman's terms in some cases, I guess, but. But it definitely helps us uh, all the way around. And, and uh, overall, yes, we are in very good financial shape. So thank you. Councilor Bruno. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So we still have more meat and potatoes in the soup? <laughs> <laughs> yes, stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you. Any questions arising? All right, seeing none, no motion required. Moving on to item 7.5, letter of support request, Watershed Resiliency. Mr. Thibault. Um, so this letter of, of um, support, or the request for this letter of support came through, um, through administration and onto council. The Old Man Watershed is a, an organization we currently support uh, in other ways annually. And um, this letter of support, fairly self-explanatory. They're, they're just looking for council support to um, lobby for a fund that was that goes back to the future for them, a larger fund of seven million per year versus the three point five. So I'll turn it over to Council for discussion. All right, thank you, Councilor McLean. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I I don't know. This is kind of a hard question to ask here because nobody really probably can answer me. But I'm just wondering how in the world they can offer help in a drought situation because we're kind of coming up on one. You know, uh, we basically ran out of water this summer and we're not getting any snow so far. And so I just am wondering how, like, I can understand combating floods and trying to help in different areas and different towns and communities, but how do they help in drought? That is my question. But I don't know if anybody can even answer that question. All right. Thank you, Mr. Tebow. I probably can't answer it real well, but I remember when the watershed folks came and did a presentation for us, and and uh, they do an awful lot. I don't know what their mandate is 100% because I don't remember that, their mission and vision statement, but I know they do an awful lot of reporting. They do an awful lot of um, measuring, engaging, and providing information back. I don't think there's anyone on the earth that can stop a drought, um, but they do do an awful lot in the environmental side of things to provide information. So that's I think it's mostly to do with what they offer municipalities in the way of studies and information, but I, again, I'm probably not the best person to answer. Yeah, I just probably reiter reiterate a little bit with that. It's, it's basically um, preserving and uh, prepping for future. It's, you know, drought probably is, is a very good question. Uh, that's, that's never anticipated. Uh, however, it, it does happen in this country and has done in the past and will in the future. So what, what they do is a, uh, is, uh, help the resource levels for future years in a lot of different ways to help protect the water sheds there. So yes, you're right, you need water for that purpose. But they're, they're really doing a lot of great work to, to enhance that and keep things moving along with the, uh, the different planting of the bulrush and that, that kind of thing that, that isn't naturally in certain areas and you know that just helps the watershed for future years. And, and basically, they're, they're down to about half what they received previously, so they're just trying to get back up to that same level to carry on. Councilor Brown? I think uh, Councilor McLean asked a very good question. Like, what, are, what do they spend their money on? Um, maybe Councilor Beckley may have more knowledge on that than myself, but uh, I could care really less if we support them or not, because I don't know what they spend our money on. Councilor Beckley? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, thank you, uh, uh, Councilor Bruin. I was on the board of that outfit. It was called Old Man River Water Council. I don't know, 25, 30 years ago, for about five years, and it was very much dominated by the environmental side of water restoration. Water situation it was a whole bunch of eggheads from the University of Lethbridge that were on that, and uh, <laughs> myself being a poor farmer, of course, but had not much to say. But uh, it's mainly focused on environmental issues at that time for sure, and I think at, at the present time it's probably equally so. 
I think they've done some uh, reasonably good work, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor and Council Bruin. Are they worth the money that we're giving them? I don't know. We're giving them about 1500 bucks a year, I think, for the last number of years. Most municipalities gave a, uh, a, a, so many cents per, per citizen or whatever, but we decided not to do that because I think it would be about 5000 bucks or something. So we, we cut that down. So, But this particular issue, of course, it's okay. It doesn't cost any money. So. Great. Thank you. Councillor Sorson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I thought that we... Some people voted to increase to 5,000 maybe last year. If anybody remembers. I, I actually do think we did increase it, Councillor Beckering. I'm not. I think we moved from 1,500 to the per yeah, capita we ratio. Low, we were low previous. I think we've already <coughs> <laughs> so, um, so I may be wrong, but I, that's my recollection. And to me, I, I don't think I can support this because I just don't know where the money goes. And so until I had a bit more information, um, yeah, I would would not be in favor of this. All right, thank you. Councillor Beckman? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Sorensen, for your information, this is not a, a request for money from the municipalities. It's a request for the provincial government for money. Which is our money. Which, yeah, still our money. Yeah. We're all uh, I, oh, whatever. I have no problem with it. All right, thank you. Any other questions arising? All right, Councillor Beckerman. Mr. Mayor, prepared to make a motion then. All right. That council authorize the mayor to sign a letter of support for an increased investment in, in environment and protected areas watershed resiliency and restoration programs to combat droughts and floods. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Defeated. All right, on to item 7.6, temporary portal sign requests, Mr. Thibault. Um, so this uh, request is coming to council because of its location. It's in a direct, uh, direct control environment, I think that's what it's called, direct control. And so council has to decide if this sign can actually be located here. Uh, in a temporary state. I don't believe that there's a cost associated to this uh, because of the short mm -hmm. time frame, but um, uh, Ms. Newberry and uh, Mr. Egan are here uh, to field any questions if need be. All right, any questions arising? Councillor Becker? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Prepare to make a motion. All right. Better pass this time, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I move the council approve the development permit DP 23-143 for the location of a temporary portable sign for a community event at 4700 and 4720 50th Street, Block C, Plan 7282 JK, with eight conditions as in the informative. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carry on. Let's see. Thank you. All right, item 7.7. .7. DP 23-140, 5701 Highway 864, Mr. Thibault. Uh, so this particular request uh, comes um, is, is part of the public hearing that happened earlier today. Uh, so this is just going through those, those motions um, with the recommendation in front of you. And Ms. Newberry and Mr. Egan are here for questions. All right. Thank you. Any questions? Councilor Brown? No questions, Mr. Mayor, but I'm prepared to make a motion. The council approves development permit DP 23-140 for a secondary moved on home located at 5701 Highway 864, Lot 1, Block 1, Plan 951, 2421 with the following 13 conditions. All right, thank you, motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carry on, let's see. thank you. Item 7.8, uh, utility building refund, Mr. Thibault. Uh, we'll have Mr. Egan come up and uh, explain this particular uh, request. Great, Mr. Egan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council. Uh, before you is a request to uh, provide a refund to two good Samaritans in our community. Uh, we have community gardens located around town and the community garden at Prairie Sunset Avenue. Uh, this spring suffered damage to the water line that normally the town provides. Uh, at, that line and the water to uh, those community gardens. Two adjacent uh, homeowners, uh, hearing that, provided uh, 
their hoses and their utility water to support the garden throughout the summer. We've examined uh, three years worth of their billing statements to try and figure out what the right answer is and then rounded it up and it comes to $200 for 45 Prairie Sunset Avenue, the resident there, and $100 for 5712 46th Street. All right. And we recommend that, uh, yes, that uh, council approves that and uh, uses, reduces their future utility bills by those amounts. All right, thank you. Councilor McLean? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I was happy that this was actually on here because one of those addresses did talk to me about it, that they were like offering their services and I was like, thank you very much. We appreciate it. And anyways, and I said, oh, talk to the town about maybe we can get a reimbursement for you. And so I am prepared to make a motion, Mr. Mayor, that council directs administration to provide a water utility refund of $200 for number 45 Prairie Sunset Avenue and $100 for uh, 5712 46th Street for water provided by the residences in support of the community garden users at Prairie Sunset Avenue when the town water supply was interrupted during the summer of 2023. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carried unanimously. Thank you. Item 7.9, response to standard item 293-2023, water loss study. Mr. Um Yes, please come back, Mr. Egan. Uh, so uh, Mr. Egan had attached a, uh, a uh, short little project statement, and, and this is in response to Councillor Beckering's request. So Mr. Egan, if you could. Uh, so thank you very much. Um, we have a, uh, as Mr. Thibault just said, a project statement where we uh, assessed what the cost would be to uh, undertake a loss study and uh, that number is in front of you. I thought uh, in digging through our files, uh, I recovered a technical, mem technical memorandum related to the wa raw water supply review that was done in 2018. Part of that report was a water loss uh, study. And uh, so if you're interested in those particular numbers, which may satisfy your, your requirement, <coughs> at that time in 2018, uh, total water treatment plant flow, uh, with, so the input number was 2.3 million cubic meters of water produced that year. Uh, an estimate of about $100,000 100, cubic meters of systems loss, so this is leakage in pipes, uh, old systems, so just natural uh, things that as we replace lines, uh, those, get, those losses get corrected. Um, and then there was, a, which left a, an, uh, so then the utility bills are summarized, and between those two numbers, uh, there's 240,000 cubic meters of un unaccounted for flow that the plant produced that we did, didn't show up on utility bills, which represents about 10% of the total water treated and produced that year. Uh, we would anticipate just that uh, some of that 100,000 has been reduced as uh, Public Works staff and distribution collection staff have dealt with water leaks in individual homes, curb stops, and, uh, and uh, other locations. Um, I do not have an opinion whether that's a, a reasonable set of ratios. Uh, we were always looking to uh, reduce that number um, because the, uh, the cost of supplying water, which is the consumption cost, is based on the operating costs uh, of all uh, uh, inputs that go into that. So there is an effect on in water loss or um, uh, unbilled water consumption that some people might be getting the, the benefit of on the actual rate payers uh, and affects that consumption <coughs> charge. So that would be the, the motivation or the principle behind why we want to resolve those issues as we come across them. And we do occasionally come across them and and uh, ask uh, people to put in water meters and and uh, services appropriately. All right, thank you, Councillor Brown. With that um, hundred thousand, would that include like hydrant flushes? Like, yep. like so, there is a lot of water that will never be metered, right? That's, That's correct. Like the ice rink, is that water metered that we put on the ice rink when we reflood the ice? And yes. Yeah, so we have meters in the in our facilities for sure. Because some like sounds like a lot of water, but 
flushing a hydrant must use a heck of a lot of water. Uh, when you look at the cumulative effect, it, it does it's significant as far as a water loss yeah. item, and there's many ways that we lose water around mm -hmm. town. So normally, um, uh, again, I don't have an opinion from the report, and we haven't commissioned the study. Part of one of the, the outputs of that, if you wanted to use the $5,000 and do a 2023-24 study would be an opinion from the engineers based on their uh, view of other systems whether 100,000 on 2.3 million is normal uh, and not to be worried about uh, and same with the 240,000. Yeah I'm just wondering like what are they, they say oh yeah we're losing water but they're not finding leaks like well, we find leaks. Uh, I know. I mean, catastrophically. The five, with the, yeah, with this uh, study, though, they're going to say, "Well, that's correct." This is just simply an analysis to see if, if Where there's uh, a leak we know nothing about, or or we're losing an inappropriate amount of water in our system, and we need to really now make a a, a new project to go and hunt for those leaks mm -hmm. proactively in order to uh, to uh, reduce the operating costs, which turns up on your utility bills as consumption water consumption. Right. Thank you. Councillor Becker? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Eaton, for that report. Uh, the 100,000 cubic meter loss, and I know that includes all kinds of things, but there must be some other water uses for the town, like parks, for example, that is not metered, correct? That's correct. So we could be using 50,000 cubic meters on parks in a year. That's not accounted for. That's not billed, or that's not gone through a meter, right? Because uh, it's treated, right? Some of it's treated, yeah. and some of it is uh, not, SMRID water. Yeah. But uh, you're, you're correct. Where we don't have, this would account for places where we don't have meters, or give us an idea of the two types of losses, unaccounted for and leakage, that would explain that differential between what comes into the plant and what shows up on utility bills as consumption charge. If I may, Mr. Mayor. Sure. You know, and I thank you very much for the update on the digging through the 2018 report. Mm -hmm. I think that puts my mind at ease somewhat for sure. I think my opinion is, Mr. Mayor, we should be able to let this thing die then. All right. Thank you. Councillor Sharson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And just uh, if we can have a conversation with Mr. Beckering. Um, with the untreated water, are we paying for an allotted amount of water from the irrigation district? And are we for sure using that allotment, or are we paying for water that we're not actually using? Um, so we, we use... Uh, SMRID water both in our as our source water for our treated water and for untreated water as far as irrigation goes so there are they are our water source and we do pay for the water that we use uh, both as a so we have an allotment and it's a flat uh, rate per year. and it's a flat rate per year and but are we using it or are we just paying for water that we're not actually using it in so um, when we negotiate with SMRID, we're also, we don't negotiate annually with them. We look longer term because the rates are pretty low. Uh, um, so we will look at uh, potential water use and water licensing. They look at it from a, because we're not, one of, we're not their only user, of course, and so they're trying to understand their capacity, their system capacity and the charges that they have to put out balance their financials and uh, and their water utilization as well. So typically I would expect we are always we always have a surplus would be the, our goal so that we're not ever withholding water uh, without a very good particular reason. So we're not running out of allocation because of poor long range planning. Okay. But then it's not a huge cost. These are, no, those <coughs> those input costs are very low. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Councilman McLean. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. I just had my little two cents that I, I was just wondering then with the fire chief here, I was like, oh, well, maybe them filling up their tanks. Like you said, the fire hydrants aren't metered. So then whenever a fire truck is called, that's a ton of water that all of a sudden just gets used without being metered, say, you know, and so maybe that is contributing, which it's is also treated water. So. Certainly on large fires, I, I don't think I'd be wrong if I said that we can, the fire department can use tens of thousands of cubic yeah, meters exactly. fighting a single fire. Um, in, in the 2.3 million to 2.5 million of treated water that we produce, it's, it's still significant, but not 
still a small percentage. Just a couple of questions for you, Mr. Egan, uh, related to the trout pond where we fill that annually. Is there something test of water loss there that, that uh, would be, I know, but it's that's part of that. But So we have but, a meter uh, yeah, okay. with SMRID and and we have an allotment, uh, right. which uh, there okay. we're just in the process of increasing to do both the trout pond and that trout pond recreation area, which includes community garden, the tracks, the dog park, things like that, that we right. see uh, potential use in the future, so. Okay, and uh, when you say the 100,000 meter, meters, cubic meters, with all the uh, uh, scenarios that Valde just explained her, it doesn't sound like it's a whole lot of loss, and it's hard to measure exactly, right? Yes. But over all things considered, with what other factors are involved, we're really not talking a lot of water loss, then, bottom line. It, it's, it, it's approximately to 10%, uh, 11% of the total treated water supply. So it's not okay. insignificant, but I'm not sure that it's, uh, it's outrageous as far as Right. Like normal systems losses. We have Expected many, many kilometers of uh, water lines sure. in town. And uh, All right. Thank you. Councillor Broom. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just when you brought up the trout pond, do we not have water rights on that quarter section there? We're in the process of, uh, of, of uh, documenting that now. Yeah, because I thought when we, we went forward with that project, we, we had lots of water because that quarter section had water rights. So I would think we'd have an abundance of water rights right now. So we... We didn't have water rights on that quarter section, uh, but we have the promise and we're working with but there were water rights on there at one time because there was irrigation there. So what has happened to those water rights? I don't know. I That's why the turnout was there was to water that quarter. So because they, they insisted we put a pipeline in, not have an open ditch down to it because we had water rights there. And I said, well, pump sites don't always have pipelines to them. so. Why did you need the pipeline? So the um, that was a, a turnout so the, for for a pump at one time. Yeah. So the ditch on the south side of the trout pond road serviced the pivot to the south on private lands. There has not been any uh, turnout or crossing north of the road. Okay. We just put the, the council approved a project, and that was put in in order to, and we did size that. Uh, to the same size as the line that was put in to replace the ditch. Oh, good. And, and so we'd also uh, have water rights north of town, too, on the land that we're going to go to the culinary, whatever it's called. Colair Institute. Yeah. yeah. I think we have water rights in many locations around yeah. town on many okay, of the properties. All right. Councilor Shorten. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think for $5,000, it's uh, worth us uh, looking into to see loss of um, water, especially with per perhaps even future water rationing um, and just being um, un understanding where we can go in the future with protecting our water. So I'd be in favor of spending $5,000. I'd be prepared to make a motion. All right. We'll see how it is <laughs> with this council today. <laughs> Council directs administration to proceed with the water loss study not to exceed $5,000 and be funded from the 2023 operating reserves. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. Councillor Firth. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I unfortunately was not at this meeting, so um, could I just ask Councillor Beckering, what was your, what was the intention behind this motion? Councillor Beckering. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Council Firth, I think I asked the question because I didn't think that we had done that 2018 study because we didn't know at that time. I thought it was done about 20 years ago, okay. and it was considerable loss at that time. I remember correctly, it was a lots of loss, uh, line loss, they call it. But we've re replaced lots of lines since then, of course. But And I was very concerned that it, it might not have been fixed, but it looks to me like it's been it's much better for sure. And I guess the $5,000, I guess I must agree with Council Sorensen that uh, I guess we can do it, put our mind at ease a little bit, I guess. I don't know. But, but water is very precious, right? So we got to make sure we know what the heck we're doing. All right. We do have a motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Item 710, stand and item council requests. Mr. Thibault. Okay, I'll pull up the listing. Um, 
I really don't have much to report. The, the item at the top was the one we just discussed, and the rest of them do remain uh, in progress. I, I don't really have any fan fantastic updates for the four remaining. <coughs> All right, thank you, Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have one to add kind of on the sidewalk front again. Um, I had one of my neighbors actually come and talk to me about this. And so we live in Park Place cul-de-sac and the sidewalk is on, if you're looking at the road, it's on the right hand side of the road and it goes so it's only on the one side of that cul-de-sac. And then where we get our mail is in front of the Christian school on 60th Ave. But the sidewalk ends in front of the Christian school. And then there's a portion of the road that is that has no sidewalk. And then it begins again at our cul-de-sac. And so this individual was like, why is that? And I was like, good question. I have no idea. But anyways, there are lots of kids that are walking by there. Everybody in our cul-de-sac gets the mail over there. And she was just like, doesn't it make more sense to be able to just walk down and around the corner instead of having to cross the street, use that sidewalk, and then cross again just to go check your mail? So it's honestly a, the tiniest little section. So I was wondering if you could look into the cost of or even for next year's, putting it into next year's sidewalk project, but just looking into the cost of extending that sidewalk just to, from just completing that sidewalk would be lovely. Do you want to put that in a formal motion? Yes, yeah, sorry, I, I move that administration. Um, look at the cost of connecting the sidewalk on 60th Ave in front of, um, the Tabor Christian School to connect with the sidewalk in Park Place Avenue. Or Park Place called the sack, sorry, it's not Avenue. All right, just to confirm, Mr. Tube, was that clarification enough for the exact location? I'm, I'm thinking yes, I think I know exactly where you're talking about, so administration can take that away. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Chair now, so thank you. Councillor Firth? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I also had something about uh, street lights. I've had some citizens bring up to me that our streets are very dark, and uh, that, and I have to say, as I was I tried to notice while I'm driving around, and I did notice that some of our streets are indeed very dark. Um, sometimes there's only one street light that services an entire block, um, and some of those street lights. Sometimes they are not working. Sometimes I notice they are in lighting the inside of the tree that they're placed beside rather than the street as they need to be. Um, and so I, it was kind of a question to administration um, and perhaps a motion, but um, how is that investigated? Does that fall on the town or our street lights? Are, is that Fortis? Still going on. Yeah, uh, Mr. Tebow? I can answer that, and perhaps with some assistance from Mr. Egan. Uh, we did commission a study or, or a standards uh, review with Fortis. So that, I don't know if it's entirely completed yet, but I believe that Raman was working towards something. So I'll hand it over to Mr. Egan. Yeah, so this summer, uh, town staff, public works staff, uh, Raman and his students, spent uh, a great number of evenings in the dark taking light readings around town. So they've, that work around the entire town has been completed. Uh, Raman is just putting the final touches on an overall report, which will provide the information you're seeking about light levels, um, provide the standard uh, and some options around that to council so you can uh, deliberate what the standard should be and then consequently what the, the implication will be to change street lighting levels in those areas that are suffering from lower than normal uh, or lower than standard uh, light levels uh, and then potentially a way to move that project or projects forward over the next decade or so. Uh, so that should be coming forward uh, uh, within the next two council meetings. All right, thank you. <coughs> Councilor Rufford. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I kind of just have a question. I guess I guess all of you can answer it if you can. So we have like a traffic committee, right? Councilor Firth is on. 
So there's a, somebody that's been on me for years about speed. And there's, the, you know, 56 abs is a new way you come in from trout on. Does traffic look at speed? Like if, if we were to re reduce speed there from 50, is that something we do? We look at? Is that something we can <coughs> look at? Or speed? Mr. Chibble. Did I beat you, <laughs> Councillor First? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is. We've had requests come our way before at the traffic committee to monitor speeds. So it's it's something that can be requested. It goes to the traffic committee. I'm not sure if we have to actually approve something or not, but we do have ways to monitor that and see if there's something that someone would like to have adjusted. Um, I know that the traffic committee was recently talking about a speed reduction in the downtown core. Um, there's been no recommendations for anything around that yet, but there's lots of communities that are going to like 40 kilometers an hour downtown instead of you know, 50 when it's all posted. So yes, the traffic committee would look at that and... So I just make a recommendation for them to look at it? Is that something that's the, if that's the request you want, then yeah. for sure. Is that a motion or just a recommendation? It would need a motion through council. Okay, I guess I make a motion that the traffic committee looks at the speed coming from 864 down 56th Avenue to wherever, I guess, keep going. I, I don't know if I have an end point. To stop sign. Till the stop sign it... I guess the stop sign. I guess the stop sign at the Lutheran Church. I'm going to say the park behind the church. Wow, that was a little. All right, motion on the yeah, table. Yeah, yeah. Motion, stop. motion on the table. Any further discussion? All right, Councilor McLean. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm pretty sure that the traffic committee has actually looked into okay. that. I remember there being those things on the side of the road I exactly in that area, just as you would come off that road. I'm pretty sure I've even read the minutes about it on the traffic committee's minutes about <coughs> reading speed and number, of, like actually monitoring that area. So I'm so, not sure. Yeah, if, if that's been done, obviously. I, uh, and been really looked at. I guess I rescind my motion on your oh, sorry. on your knowledge. You just have to with, withdraw the motion. <laughs> withdraw the motion. You can do it, absolutely. Yep. All right. Thank you, okay. Councillor First. I was just going to say exactly what Councillor uh, McLean said. That yes, we have discussed that before. Um, although, if there is still concerns, um, we can certainly discuss it at the traffic committee. But it has been, yeah, investigated, looked into. They put the speed signs out, and and they didn't find action. I was surprised, but they didn't find that there was um, a lot of excessive speed happening on that road. Um, I All right. Do, Thank I do you. Have one other one. Sure. Go ahead. So, if you guys have ever walked, I guess Johnson's Edition and along the walking path that's along the highway to the. There is some bulrushes, and they're really pretty. And once in a while, we do rip them right out, right? And then it just kind of exposes all the garbage. So <laughs> I was saying, I guess I'm making a motion that we look into never removing the bulrushes <laughs> and keeping it environmentally nice. Uh, it's yeah, unless it's a problem. I don't know. I just, uh, I guess, just. Is that, is that your, yeah. you're putting that in a form of motion? You want to go with that again? So <laughs> there is, okay, you know, okay, you know, along with Johnson's Editions and the golf course. John, Dogtown, is that, does oh, that give you okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right, between, between, yeah. between Johnson's Edition and there, there's the canal, oh, right. and then the canal goes along, the, well, not, not East 64, along the highway too, towards the pool, right? So we do tear them bulrushes out the cattails, or, yeah. right? Now, if for a maintenance issue, I maybe I imagine, right? So I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so if I'm we, making a motion that I guess. Before you make a motion, okay, go on. Be, uh, just uh, be a friendly pre-motion thing. Okay, good, good. They, go on. <laughs> they they cut the bulrushes so that the ditch, ditch doesn't back up and flood, because um, it'll retain snow in the winter, and you need to keep bulrushes trimmed down. Um, if you, if not, you do run into the trouble of um, blocking the ditches. On on that advice, I'll also bring my motion back. Well, you didn't actually make it. Yet. No, 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 you okay. weren't. You weren't. You know, it was just All in the right. middle of it. So yeah, Thanks okay. Again. Just hit delete on it, please. 
All right, so we're good with that. All right, Councilor Brewer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have a, a, more of a question or uh, wondering what's happening. Uh, Cooley Clinic. I was approached by the owner there that uh, he wanted to put additional parking along the street that goes north south past his building there. And I don't know if that's come to administration or what the decision was or where we're sitting with that. Mr. Tibble. That did come through the traffic committee. Uh, the traffic committee was not in favor of their proposal. Uh, there has been other discussions with that, uh, with the owner of the, of the clinic. And uh, just, just as early as last week, actually, I stopped over and had some conversations around how they might be able to um, be compliant with the parking requirements that they've got. So they are in the works of, of um, making those adjustments and coming back to, uh, to the development folks to have a discussion around parking spaces. Okay, to follow up with that, um, I feel that should have come to council. Um, traffic committee shouldn't have the authority to say no to additional parking. That, a decision like that should have come to council to decide on. I'm a little disappointed that traffic committee has that much power that they didn't even get a chance to come to council. All right, Kelsey first. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the traffic committee did discuss it at length. Um, and I believe that the traffic committee can council, can any member of council come to the traffic committee meetings if they are so interested? They can. But we cannot speak. I, something like that should have come to council, I believe, for council to make a decision if we add additional parking along the street instead of a committee to inform council that they should be just like we do with the MPC. We'll make recommendations to council one way or the other. Right. Council will then decide. Or like we had troubles with stop signs. We made a decision the traffic committee has to come to council if we want to put up stop signs. Or permanent traffic control devices, yes. Yeah. So I think this falls in exactly the same area. Hmm. I disagree. Well, I, I really think that should be a discussion because it um, that's a town decision, that's not a committee's decision. Well, um, you know what, sorry, Councillor McClain, or sorry, Councillor Furthy, go ahead. Uh, to be fair, we do have parking requirements for developments that are very clearly stated. But what um, was your decision? Why did you not allow that? Um, part of it was because there is boulevards along there. It's a uh, main thoroughfare and uh, a gateway into Westview. Um, it's a busy road. And um, what they were proposing was angle parking. Um, which, which to me looked like there's lots of parking. Room. To take out the grass. Take out the grass and put angle parking in there. Yes, to me it looked very well, and I, I, mm. I, I supported it when I spoke to him. Oh, thinking well, it would come. To the council. decision of the traffic committee was that, uh, with how much traffic comes in and out on that road, that to add angle parking would um, further congest that area. I just compared to say the possible Lethbridge angle parking all along the streets there, and that's <laughs> right in the residential areas as well. I, I just thought that would be in, uh, such right. a simple request. It was yeah. at his expense. Yeah, that parking was existing, though, around the hospital. Whereas but it was at his expense, and the committee decides, the committee on their, on council's behalf, decide not to allow it. I think the decision was actually to, um, to allow, potentially allow um, parallel parking, but not angle parking. Or there was discussion around that. I can't remember what the decision was. <coughs> just for record, I think it should have come to council. Yeah, just to uh, kind of help with the traffic. I mean, I sat on that a long time also, but, you know, it's, uh, I see where you're going with that, Councilor Bruin, but uh, all things considered, it's increased from what used to be under the CAO control only. So the traffic committee now has the, uh, the power to do what they're doing, and if something's to change, then it comes to council for any, any changes, right? But if it's already in an existing format, it's not deemed to be reasonable or feasible then and all, also council Bruin, just to add it's also recognized in the minutes that we receive every quarter as to what was discussed and the, the base rationale behind that Councilor but every late. quarter is too late that's three months i i, I just th really <coughs> feel that should come to council it's uh, been bothering me that it hasn't yet come to council i've been waiting for it to come up all right, fair enough. Councilor McLean? 
Um, I didn't have anything to add to that. I just had a different item to discuss with council. I was wondering about people's opinions of changing bylaw to not be complaint based. Um, I feel like people don't like ratting out neighbors. And it's a hard thing to then call into bylaw and say, hey, can you please come and deal with this issue? And so we already pay them to do their job. Can they not use their own eyes and see things of people that are, you know, like they go around and they know what's compliant, what's not compliant. I'm just wondering if we can change that and what your view is. I was just wanting some discussion on that. All right. Mr. Tibble. My view in particular or council's view on that? <laughs> I, I can tell you it's been discussed before and it's been discussed in actually other municipalities. Uh, it's a very difficult system when it's when it's not complaints driven to to pre-manage things because then you're make, you're creating things that might not even be an issue for, for some folks. Um, I'm, I'm going to guess that, you know, Mr. Bell is probably the best to speak on this, seeing that they deal with all the bylaw uh, infractions, and he probably has a very robust discussion around why you would or why you wouldn't, and, and I, I don't really, but I know that in multiple municipalities that I've been in, this discussion has come up, and there's some instances that everyone would love to have preempted and not waited, and it's not that it can't happen, um, but I do believe you'll run into some kind of a capacity discussion around how much you can and can't achieve and how much you will or won't look for. And it also starts to bring into question based on previous discussions, are we picking on someone because of whatever reason? It seems a little subjective as opposed to us doing it versus some member of the, of the public doing it. So that's all I can offer, but uh, I mean, administration can ask council or can ask um, Chief Abella to provide some kind of some kind of discussion around that in one way, shape, or form, if that's council's wishes. All right, thank you, Councillor Brew. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm going to go back on my other topic a little bit. I would like to make a motion that the traffic committee is required to make recommendations to council on whether or not council accepts their decision. We have to have some sort of uh, say in what the traffic committee recommends or enforces. So I like the motion such as we do with MPC. We make motions, recommendation or not recommendations to council. I believe the traffic committee should do the same. So I'd like to make the motion that the traffic committee is to make recommendations for or against policy decisions or their decisions. I'm not quite sure the wording for that. Um, makes their recommendations to councils before decisions are made. Council has the final say. All right. Councilor Sorensen. Um, I think we need to continue. This is it unrelated. Discussion. It's you have unrelated. nothing related to this. Okay. No. Councilor Firth, I believe this is related for yourself. It is. Um, if. Uh, Councillor Bruin's motion was to pass, then I would um, I would recommend just getting rid of the traffic committee entirely because if every issue um, is going to come to council anyway, then I think it would be fairly redundant to be discussing it at a traffic like at the traffic committee and then again discussing it at council. It would kind of defeat the purpose. All right, thank you, Councillor Becker. <coughs> thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I, I, Councillor Bruin makes a point. However, rather than voting on this particular motion, Mr. Mayor, I want to be, perhaps put this in abeyance for an observation from administration, what the proper procedure should be and other communities, what it is, and, and do a comparison of sorts and what decision a uh, traffic committee may make or not make. The parking thing, I have a tendency to agree with Council Bruin, that probably should have gone before Council, probably, but I'm not sure. Depends on the authority of the traffic committee, of course. So rather than Voting on the motion, Council Bruin, would you put in abeyance for a next council meeting so we can have a bit of a report from administration regarding this issue? Uh, thank you, Mr. Becker. I appreciate the advice, sir, and I would uh, put in uh, the motion. I'm sorry, I didn't have my mic on. Thank you, Mr. Becker, for the, that. Uh, <coughs> I appreciate the comment, and I would uh, like to, do, uh, to have further abeyance from, how do I word that now? Uh, as you said so well. 
<laughs> for administration to come back to us on that. So okay. just just to be clear, you're. You possibly could do an amendment to that motion or you could table it to the next meeting if that would be your choice. Uh, the original motion is that uh, the traffic committee is required to make recommendations for or against their decisions to council on whether or not council accepts their decision with council having the final say. Yes. So to that I would add, can we table this to next meeting with the administration's input? Okay, <clears throat> so to be clear, it's a little a little unusual with this whole case scenario, but uh, we had a motion on the table, have a motion on the table, with the now suggested to go to table to the next meeting. Well, that's what I'm, I'm thinking, Councillor Bruin, just to make it nice and clean, <laughs> all the way around, and Councillor Beckery, help me out if you will, but it's a little different, right? But I think, uh, can Councilor Brewer not ask for that to be, his motion to be withdrawn, and then just ask for that to be on the agenda with some further follow-up for administration to be on an agenda? We can have it on agenda, absolutely. But does that cover all the bases? Is it yourself, uh, Ms. Van Ham, also related to the uh, current status? <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of different ways to do that for sure. This will get you there as well. Um, or he could withdraw the motion and make a new motion asking administration to bring it back uh, information to the next council. I think meeting. that would be the, the suggestion if Councillor Bruin is okay with that. <laughs> I'll do it because that's how you like it. But, uh, um, I think my motion is fairly clear. Um, I, I'm sorry, I will not be here at next council meeting. I have a prior engagement, so I'd like to bring it to the... the, the Two the, meetings? Yes. So, okay, um, okay. Because I like to be, I'm sorry, I'm not able to make next council meeting, but uh, if we could tape or put it on next council meeting's agenda to um, further investigate this. So yeah. First off, Council Brent, to withdraw your current did, motion. Uh, yeah. no. Oh, we have to vote on it. No. 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 Oh, I, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll, res it. I'll rescind my motion. Just re withdraw. Withdraw my withdraw. motion. Okay. And that we uh, bring this forward uh, to council meetings from now. I don't know the date off the top of my head. Be a December date. Uh, uh, December date. First, first well, meeting in the first meeting in December. Council meeting in December. Only, only meeting in December. Only one. Yeah, one meeting. So we get a lot of whatever the date is, yes. Yeah, whatever date okay. the council meeting is in December. Okay. December, December 18th, 18th council meeting with uh, some recommendations from administration. All right. Enough information for administration to follow That's up on. Clear, okay. <laughs> clear as right. mud. We got it. C Carrie's giving me the nod, right. so we're good. I'll get my tips. Thank you, Councilor Sorensen. Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. I, I just have two things. I just wanted to respond to Councillor McLean's um, uh, discussion on bylaw enforcement. Um, part of it, because we sit on both Councillor Firth and myself sit on the police commission, and um, part of it is education to the citizens too. And so it is um, complaint driven, but it's also discussed of how to prevent bylaw infractions too. So that's kind of how they're operating right now. Um, we could bring it up as to further discussion, but it has been discussed in previous count. Uh, All right, thank meetings. you. Councilor McLean? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for the input. Um, yeah, I was just, I don't know. I've, mull I've been mulling it over for a little while because I feel like a lot of people just don't like calling in. Even though there are some things that warrant that phone call, but I just, um, yeah, so I wasn't really sure how to go about it or if it's something that should be done or not be done, but I was just wanting to, yeah. I can just say a little what's bit. the best way to approach this is all, so. Is it anonymous when you call in a complaint, or is it? It is. Yep. So. Uh, yes, it is. They ask for your information. But it's I not, don't think yeah. they go and tell the person who you're no. complaining that, oh, this so-and-so called on you. Your no. Neighbor. But <laughs> people just don't like doing it in general. No. But, yeah. but I can add also, Councilor McLean, that uh, the bylaw and or the police have the ability and or option anytime if they see any infraction. It doesn't have to be complaint-driven at all. 
it's strictly a judgment call. So if they see an infraction, don't follow up on it. That's their call for whatever reason. But they certainly have that control on which way to go. It does not have to be complaint-driven ever. That's one of the many methods, but it certainly does not have to be. All right, Councillor Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just have a different topic of discussion. All right. <laughs> Throw one more in the hat. Um, there's a lot of discussion on this poor dog park and the um, maintenance and, um, yeah, complaint driven as to, you know, garbage, um, the grass, the gopher holes, people's um, safety. And so how can we move forward and make this a uh, nicer park for our citizens in town to use it? I'm not sure. Yeah, no, all right, fair question. You know, it's, we have had uh, an individual or individuals different times come to council with some suggestions and or asks for, for assistance and even fundraised for different things in the past there. Don't know that's been going on for the last couple of years or so. But, um, and I know there's a number of people doing some work there on their own, trying to do the upkeep with whatever is necessary there. So saying that, it's, uh, I've, I've seen a number of complaints myself, and uh, being as we're promoting that whole area, that's that's right next door to everything else. So I, I think, Mr. Thiebaud, you, you had talked about the irrigation. That's going to enhance the, the water capability, so keeping things green out there for one. I believe is that that's part of that, right? But um, I guess the, the, the basic question is the maintenance side and or some some uh, enhancement, I think, is sort of the, the ask. Right. So I'll I'll speak. I, I wasn't here when all that stuff was created, so I'll be speaking a little bit off the cuff. But I, I believe that, um, th that there hasn't really been any budget request come through council to support that dog park in the way that they're asking for it to be supported. So by hook or by crook, we 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 you know have leftover stuff from other places, or we bring in some pea gravel to help, or we so. Administration is really, you know, Robin Peter to pay Paul for the for the dog park, and I I don't know that we even tried to cover it in this year's in this year's budget. Administration has talked to to dog users and and seen, asked them if there was any appetite to you know create a society or something like that. Um, there doesn't seem to be an appetite for that. There there's a lot of chatter, but no one no one wanting to build that type of that type of body of, of people to look after. So I guess in short administration, we could certainly look into what it might cost to look after those grounds, but we don't have it in our budget today. And, and I know that we're already, you know, with taking on the meadows and taking on the, uh, the few more parks that have come online around Prairie Lake and the stormwater ponds. They're just, we have to have something more to look after that park than what we have today. So certainly, council could ask. Right. Thank you, Councillor Shortson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to make a motion for administration to investigate the cost and the requirements of maintaining that um, area of the dog park. Um, I'm not sure if it's part of the Trout Master Plan or if it's something different. No, something different. So yeah, is that good enough? I think I've covered all the bases also with that, I believe. Okay. okay. <laughs> all right. Motion on the table. Oh, Councilor Bruin. It's kind of um, the dog park's a great, great uh, thing to have there, but it's also part of like a user group responsibility. Like if they pick up their own garbage, they should be. And now the dog poop and all that is kind of beware. You pick up your own dog poop. So now to have the town to have to start doing that, like, like well, how far do you want to go with maintenance with it? Fill in gopher holes, grade it, seed grass. Like what? Like how, what do we want to do with it? Like we can investigate it all we want, but can I? Sure, Councilor sure. Yeah. So th that ask is just if there's a garbage for it to be emptied. So it's not picking up after people, but just actually maintaining the garbage that's um, existing there. And then if there are weeds, and I think there was some problem with along the fence or something like that. So just general upkeep. I did explain that this is like a wild grass prairie. So just even little steps of moving forward. That's not going to be blowing our budget, but just incremental things that we can help out. All right. Thank you, Mr. Tebow. A couple of comments because my 
I keep having to press my green light. <laughs> One of them, uh, administration can bring back some incremental costs to try and cover some of that, whether we do, you know, we go this far, this far, this far, um, and and council can, you know, kind of choose a la carte how far council wants to go. I, I mean, some of the comments that I, I believe you're making reference to that I've seen is there's been references to the Coaldale Dog Park, which is just recently got, you know, sod put down on it. And so it's 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 fancy, it's good looking, it's it's been well looked after, up, you know, by doing that. Um, do we want that level of service? It, it, that's what we'll have to, you know, administration yeah. will come back and ask council, what level of service do you think you want there? And, and council can decide. Yeah, and I think all things considered because of what, you know, the development's going on out there with everything right next door to the dog park, it's uh, it's enhanced quite a lot, right? So, I mean, I think that's the comparison now. Originally, it was just a standalone location. You hardly heard about it, right? Now, it's quite different and quite well used as well. So... I can see where people are coming from, and like you say, Mr. Tebow, comparing Coldeal, absolutely, that's a tough comparison. There, they they've got that looking really good. So, it's uh, that's kind of where we're getting some of these comments, and uh, I think justifiable comparisons, and looking to get the best of the best, if, if possible. Obviously, there's always costs involved there too. So, all right, we do have a motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carry on, we'll see. Thank you. Oh, sorry, missed you. All right, carried. All right, thank you, Mr. Thibault. Uh, I just wanted to go back. We we never actually voted on Jack's motion, uh, oh, so sorry, so we've got it here, and and, and then Councillor Soren Torrance and dove in and, and oh, stole okay. the thunder, and and so I didn't want to miss that motion. So would you like Miss Van Ham to reread? No, I thought uh, I believe he had, he withdrew his motion. He just asked for. You but to then he made it. He made a motion for administration to look into. Oh. Apology accepted. Okay. 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 Right. Okay, so just to clear, I guess, sir, just, yeah, I guess for my benefit, to be clear, I guess I missed that piece, but I've been going back and forth with a variety of topics here. So if you don't mind, Ms. Van Ham. <laughs> so Councillor Brown's motion was basically the same as his previous motion, um, but to bring, which said the traffic committee is required to make recommendations for or against their decisions to council whether or not council accepts their decision with council having the final say and bring uh, to the December meeting investigations with recommendations from administration. All right, that's, that's exactly fair. what I said. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carried now. Thank you. Anything else, standing item wise? <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> any, uh, no delegations, uh, any media inquiries whatsoever? Uh, there's no media inquiries that I'm aware of. All right. Let's ask for a motion to move into our 30-minute uh, meal break, please. Councillor Becker, motion on the table. All in favor? Okay, now let's, thank you. All right. Item 10.1, the... First required motion, Councillor Firth. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that Council directs administration to rescind resolution 353-2023, which states, moved by Councillor Firth, that Council appoints Mayor Prokop and Councillor Sorensen to the Chief Administrative Officer Performance Evaluation Committee until the 2024 Council Organizational Meeting. And that Council appoints Mayor Prokop, Councillor Sorensen, and Councillor Remfert to the Chief Administrative Officer Performance Evaluation Committee until the 2024 organi Council Organizational Meeting. All right. Thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Chair unanimously. Thank you. All right. Item number two, Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that Council directs administration to rescind resolution. 354-2023, which states, moved by Councillor Bruin, that Council appoints Councillor Bruin and Councillor Mc McLean to the Development Authority, the MPC, and Mayor Prokop as alternate until the 2024 Council Organizational Meeting. And Council appoints Councillor Bruin and Councillor McLean to the Development Authority, the MPC, until the 2024 Council Organizational Meeting. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? 
You're announced. Thank you. Item number three, Council Ruffer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make a motion that Council directs administration to rescind <coughs> resolution 358 slash 2023, which states moved by Councilor Firth that Council appoints Councilor Bruin and Councilor Sorensen to the Tabor Recreational Board and the Mayor Pro Cop as alternate until the 2024 organizational meeting carried unanimously and Council appoints Councilor Bruin and Councilor Sorensen to the Tabor Recreational Board until the 2024 Council organization meeting. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carry unanimously. Thank you. Councilor Sorensen, item number four. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make a motion that Council directs uh, administration to rescind resolution 362-2023, which states moved by Councillor McLean and Council appoints Councillor Sorensen and Councillor McLean to the Joint Economic Development Committee and Mayor Prokop as the alternate until the 2024 Council organizational meeting and right. Council Okay, sure. There's more. <laughs> and Council appoint Council Sorensen and Councillor McLean to the Joint Economic Development Committee until the 2024 Council Organizational Meeting. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carry on. Thank you. Item 10.2, Councillor Firth. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that Council recognizes the Municipal District of Tabor's appointments to the Joint Economic Development Committee as Councillor John Turcato and Councillor Brian Hildebrand, recognizes the Municipal District of Tabor's appointments to the Intermunicipal Development Committee as Councillor Merrill Harris and Reeve Tamramianaga, and on the basis of the recommendation of the Municipal District of Tabor Council, appoints Municipal District of Tabor representatives to town boards as follows. Number one, the Tab Town of Tabor Recreation Board, Brian Hildebrand. Number two, Town of Tabor Arts and Heritage Committee, Merrill Harris and Reeve Tamramianega as alternate. And number three, T Tabor Municipal Library Board, Merrill Harris. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carry now. So thank you. Just a motion to close the meeting. Councilor Broom. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make the motion to close the meeting. Motion on the table. All in favor? Carry now. So thank you.